Kevin Green back with us to kick things off this week. Going to take a look at Vol as well. Uh, let's start with the uh, S&P open interest uh, KG. Where are we at in terms of uh, big levels and strikes that people are playing with? Well, Oliver, we continue to see, uh, you know, that positive level or those calls being sold continuing to move up here. So looking at positive gamma sitting at around 6050, that could be an area of resistance for the market. Now, we still cannot discount the fact that there's still a lot of structure sitting at the 6000 level. And I think that was really evident on Friday going into the close here where we uh, uh, broke above 6000, but then faded going into the close here. So that's another level just to be mindful for this week. And if we do kind of break down for whatever reason, 5880 is on the radar uh, for me to see uh, if some buyers actually do step in you can kind of see it's a little bit of a technical level it's pretty much the highs that we had back in uh, 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 in october of se uh, october 17th uh so that could be a pretty decent area where buyers may step in here but for the most part, everything is systems go. I mean, the market's really bulled up. Advanced decline continues to, to rise to the upside here. And you're starting to see a broadening out of this rally. It's not just concentrated in the mega cap names. Uh, you're also seeing it uh, you know, being uh, you know, reflected in some of the, even the de defensive sectors that we saw kind of lagging last week, as well as mid caps and small, small caps, as you guys kind of talked about earlier this morning. That advanced decline uh, line down there picking up, right? That's uh, pretty good stuff. Seems like all signs point go. Yeah, for now, uh, right? I think the biggest thing to just be mindful of is uh, what's on the economic calendar for this week. What could actually kind of disrupt this rally? And I think that's going to be on Wednesday where we have the CPI data yeah. set coming in, expecting uh, a little bit of a hot print when it comes to month over month, sitting at around 0.3%. If you're looking at headline, I, I do want to say, though, Oliver, the swaps market is actually pricing in a little bit more of a hotter print, and potentially we do see a reacceleration here. Now, obviously, that's going to be one print among many that have been very favorable, uh, but that could be one sign or one area that we could see a little bit of a pullback in the market. And I'm also looking at uh, the VIX minus the uh, front month VIX futures. Uh, and you are still seeing a little bit more of a backwardation. Actually, the VIX earlier this morning was still uh, moving up uh, to the upside here. Now, that could be call side skew, uh, definitely. But that's just something that I always kind of keep on the radar. Once I start seeing uh, spot VIX actually continuing to rise as the market's rising, it does uh, kind of show that obviously there's a lot of optimism within the market. Maybe that's call side driven, but also uh, we can we could see maybe a little bit of a fracture or maybe a small technical pullback here or a consolidation before we continue to move higher as aggressively as we've done over the last couple of sessions. Okay, so right now looking at uh, just above zero for VIX minus VX, uh, the big shift last week, does that big drop on Wednesday, is that a return to normalcy or is that you're saying that we should shift back into the older regime? Yeah, no, it's a it's a return to normalcy, right? Yeah. Like, you're looking at the VIX curve, and the VIX curve is now kind of moving to the upside, and rightfully so, especially if you're looking at the December contract. But this also just kind of reflects that the 30-day vol that's being priced in uh, is, is still relatively high compared to what de December is showing. Now, when you're kind of looking at the level, you're going to say, yep, VIX is going down, and that's and rightfully so. But when you're looking at it on a relative basis or if you're matching the two, uh, there's still a little bit of near-term either uncertainty or optimism in the market kind of depends depending on how you're kind of looking at it. Uh, but this is something that we highlighted uh, last week or the week before on a Monday as well, that kind of VIX up, stocks up type of environment. And that's when we actually did see a little bit of a pullback. And usually uh, that's, that tends to be the case. So something to keep on the radar. It's not a massive backwardation by any stretch of the imagination here. It's pretty much flat, but this is kind of the first time that we've crossed above that zero line uh, since pretty much that, that election ball drop. And so once again, it's a radar item. Doesn't mean it's going to tell us direction in the market, but I would just be a little bit cautious here, especially if we do see liquidity starting to dry up. And we'll have a chart later today, uh, kind of showing the E-mini S and P, uh, you know, bid ass size, and that's really the gauge I use for liquidity. If we start seeing that dry up a little bit, then we have this gappy action to the upside or downside that probably uh, foreshadows that maybe a little bit of a pullback or a back and fill type of scenario could be taking place here. Okay, so we hope things are uh, continue to go smoothly. Uh, for liquidity. All right, well, so we'll get an update on that later on the day. Hey, you mentioned the uh, small and mid real quick. Tell me about this uh, uh, chart real quick, KG. Yeah, so this is a 180-day, four-hour chart. This is just comparing the E-mini S&P futures, the 500, uh, compared to the E-mini S&P mid-cap 400 here. What I'm looking at as far as opt optimism for this week, Oliver, is the outperformance of mid-caps and small caps. So this is just a ratio chart at the bottom that kind of shows you that performance. And if we are going to see mid-caps outperform, you would like to see that yellow line move to the downside and vice versa if uh, mega-cap names or the S&P 500 in general is going to win to outperform. Once again, I think this is more of a risk-on gauge in the 
market? How much appetite do we have? Are we really searching for more alpha uh, right now? And I think this is going to be the perfect uh, ratio for us to be able to kind of highlight that uh, rather than using just the small caps in general. If you're looking at the Russell Oliver, because uh, there's a lot of speculative activity here. The mid caps are really the unknown unknown or the things that people mm, usually yeah. do not pick up on. And so that's why I'm kind of keeping it on my radar. Oh, there's like an implicit little uh, quality uh, tilt and filter when you go from the small index to the mid index or the EMD future. All right. Thanks, uh, KG. Good stuff.